Well, you say socialism hasn't created any wealth, but what about you know all the all the great uh, cars and uh, and innovations that came out of the Soviet Union? Is that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you, you, some of you, uh, 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 you know, millennials, Gen X, should 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 uh, go find a museum where they have one of those cars, <laughs> and, and you can never want to step foot in one of those. Uh, these these are death traps uh, if they were put on a highway. Luckily, in the Soviet Union, they didn't have real highways, so. Uh, you know, they, they could drive at the slow speed and, and if the car fell apart, nothing would happen. Um, no, they, they produced nothing. They created nothing. Um, the things, the areas in which they seemingly progressed were areas where they stole technology from the West. Um, there was no innovation in the Soviet Union. There was no progress. And indeed, for the average person in the Soviet Union, it was nothing but stagnation, poverty, and, and, and misery. And that's why, by the way, uh, the Soviet Union did not allow its citizens to travel. You couldn't leave the Soviet Union because they realized that if they allowed people to travel, they would never come back. Uh, this is why in Berlin, they built a, a, a wall to prevent East Germans, communist Germans, from escaping to the West, not the other way around. I know, I know, uh, you know, if you, if you listen to a Marxist enough, and you believe that, that the, the Marxist paradise, you think that people are escaping capitalism to go and join the, the socialist uh, uh, East Germany. No, the wall was there to prevent people from fleeing the misery, the poverty, the pathetic life that they had under communism. So, uh, yeah, I mean, history just, just it reinforces basically uh, my argument that... Uh, Communism has produced nothing other than misery and death. You know, don't forget that. And empty store shelves. It's probably mm -hmm. responsible. Yeah, I mean, there was, but, but more importantly, they're responsible for anywhere between, depending on the story you read, anywhere between 30 to 100 million people mm -hmm. dead. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't include Mao Zedong, who's got another 40 to 80 million, mm -hmm. million people's lives on his bloody hands. Communism is the most murderous regime in all of human history. So I have no idea how it is popular among young people, why it's attractive to young people, given the, the, the basic history, other than to tell you that your professors, your teachers are lying to you. They're not telling you the truth. And uh, uh, there, were a lot of, there were a lot of people on, um, a lot of uh, Marxists on YouTube uh, telling you lies. So uh, you got to open your eyes. You got to read real history. You got to figure out what really happened in these places and, and, and generalize from it to the fact that Nowhere has socialism ever succeeded. In if the if the measure of success is human prosperity, it's right. it's it's uh, you know human flourishing. Right, and and that's a pretty unbelievable stat because even you know I think we've all met people in their lives who have made stupid decisions or bad decisions, and you know once in a while they'll work out. I mean, socialism literally has a zero percent success rate. I mean, it's been tried. There was one point in uh, I think what the nineteen. 1960s, 1970s, where the majority of the world was under communism, socialism. Yes, and yes, so absolutely. You know, <laughs> and people talk about the wars that, it, that supposedly West has created. I mean, uh, the communists uh, believed in internationalization. So they brought war to everywhere they touched. Um, uh, they 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 try to occupy as much land as possible. Um, they try to internationalize it. You still have communists today who argue that the only way for communism to succeed is if every single human being on planet earth is enslaved by it. Mm -hmm. And let don't mistake it, being under communism is the equivalent of slavery. Uh, everybody is enslaved to uh, the, 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 the totalitarian leaders. Um, so yes, uh, in the 60s and 70s, a majority of the world was under communism, significant majority of the world. Places like India weren't communists, but they were socialists. Um, in, it's only when India abandoned socialism that it start creating some wealth and people start rising out of socialism. And of course, China, we know the story of right. China. Uh, it's only once Mao Zedong is dead, thank God. Uh, you know, it's too bad it didn't happen earlier, but uh, it's only once he dies does uh, China start reverting to more, uh, to opening up, to creating islands of freedom, islands of some capitalism. And that's when you see the economic boom, and that's when you see people rising up out of poverty in, in China. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, 
we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Your Own Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.